Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at a radical equation. We have the fourth root of x plus 10 plus the fourth root of 7 minus x equals 3. I know at this point you started guessing some answers, but the biggest question here is, is there only one solution? You could easily guess one of the solutions, I think, especially the positive one. But anyways, let's get into this. So, first of all, when you get a radical equation, the general idea is to isolate one of the radicals and then square both sides, or whatever the power is, raise it to both sides. So in this case, I'm going to isolate fourth root of x plus 10 and write it as 3 minus the fourth root of 7 minus x. Now, at this point, you could square both sides or you could raise both sides to the fourth power. I don't want to keep squaring it, so I'm going to go ahead and raise both sides to the fourth power. On the right hand side, we kind of have to deal with binomial theorem. Remember the coefficients 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 from Pascal's triangle. Anyways, the left hand side gives us x plus 10. And the right hand side, you should be getting something like 3 to the fourth power minus 4 times 3 to the third multiplied by fourth root of 7 minus x. And then plus 6 times 3 squared multiplied by the fourth root of 7 minus x to the second power. And then minus 4 times dot 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 dot. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to get a lot of interesting terms here. The fourth root of something the fourth root of something squared, which is the square root of that, and then you're going to get something like uh, fourth root of something cubed, which is going to turn into something to the power three-fourths. So it's going to get ugly, and I don't even know if there's a way to clear all the radicals here. Maybe there's a way to do it. Maybe you just square both sides, and then it'll be easier, or fourth root without putting the radicals on different sides. Anyways, this is kind of complicated and not very straightforward. Very messy indeed. All right, so let's go ahead and use a smarter approach. And here's what the smarter approach is. First of all, I'm going to rewrite my original equation so you can see. I know some folks complain about not being able to see the problem all the time. So if there's a way to put it on every page, now I couldn't really find an easy way to uh, make the problem show up on every page, kind of like freeze the problem section. Not yet. Uh, so I'm going to keep writing it. I know some people complained about it. I'm aware of that issue. But I guess at the beginning of the video, if you just kind of write down, jot down the problem, uh, it'll be easier uh, for you to keep track of. Anyways, so here's the smart approach. I'm going to call one of these A and the other one B. And some people are like, what? This, is this a smart approach? You're going from one variable to two variables. Yes, sometimes we have to sacrifice the number of variables that we have because having more variables doesn't necessarily mean the problem is harder to solve. It's actually, in this case, it's a lot easier. So why do we do that? Because we want to get rid of the radicals, first of all. So this gives us something nice. A plus B equals 3. Super duper, right? But it also gives us something else. How? If you consider the following, a is fourth root of x plus 10, why not raise both sides to the fourth power and get something nicer? Now we got rid of the radicals. So we know a to the fourth is x plus 10. And if you do the same thing with b, you get b to the fourth equals x minus 7. Now, how does this help us? By the way, did I write x minus 7? That should be 7 minus x. I don't know why I wrote that. I apologize. That, I'm like, something should cancel out. Okay, here we go. So that should be a 7 minus x. My bad. 7 minus x. And then when you add these up, you're going to get something nice. x is going to cancel out, and you're going to get a to the 4th plus b to the 4th equals 17. Great, 10 plus 7. Easy. So let's go ahead and put that down here. And then at this point, I'm going to introduce a couple different approaches. First of all, this is a polynomial system, so it should be easy to solve. How? Uh, not very easy, but kind of easy. So we're going to use substitution first. Let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to show you the other approach, which is also algebraic, but it kind of uses um, some factoring idea. The first method, this one, uses the binomial theorem, of course, and you know we're going to get a quartic and so on and so forth. Anyways, let's get into it. So b can be written as 3 minus a. We're going to go ahead and substitute that here. a to the fourth power plus 3 minus a 
to the fourth power equals 17. Again, at this point, you could probably guess the solution or the solutions. Let's go ahead and expand the 3 minus a to the fourth power. That's going to give me a to the fourth plus 81 minus 4 times 27 times a plus 6 times 9 times a squared minus 4 times 3 times a cubed plus a to the fourth and that equals 17. This is the binomial theorem for a minus b or x minus y to the fourth power. a to the fourth plus a to the fourth is going to give me 2a to the fourth minus 12a cubed plus 54a squared minus 108a plus 81 equals 17. Now when you subtract 17 from 81, you're going to get 64. And guess what? You're going to have a 0 on the right hand side and everything is divisible by 2. So let me go ahead and divide everything by 2 to simplify my expression a little bit. So the numbers are smaller. 64 divided by 2 is 32 and that is equal to 0. So I just skipped that uh, step. I, I hope you're fine with that. Shouldn't be too hard. Now one thing I want you to know is this is a quartic equation. Quartic equations can be solved. There's a formula, but quite complicated. You can turn it into a cubic. Um, you can reduce it a uh, couple different ways to do it. But uh, we're going to check for special cases first. What is one of the things that I keep telling you to check and check and check? The sum of the coefficients. 1 plus 27 is 28. 28 plus 32 is 60. Check it out. I'm adding the positive ones. What is negative 6 plus negative 54? Negative 60. 60 minus 60 is equal to 0. Yay! Sum of coefficients is 0, which means a equals 1 is a solution. Awesome. But are there any other solutions? This is a quartic? There must be. Well, if you kind of divide this by a minus 1, I'm going to spare you the trouble. You'll notice that a equals 2 is another solution. Or you could use the factor theorem, or what is it called? Rational root theorem. Yes, that's what it is. Divisors of 32. There's quite a few. But definitely 2 is one of them because 2 is a power or 32 is a power of 2. Anyways, to keep a long story short, again, I'm going to give you, for the sake of time, the other factor is going to be a squared plus, oops, not plus, that should be a minus sign, a squared minus 3a plus 16. And the whole thing is equal to 0. So that's my cortic. Obviously, from here, we know a equals 1. But a is fourth root of x plus 10, and that should equal 1. From here, we get x plus 10 is equal to 1, and x equals negative 9. Great, so that's one of the solutions. I don't know if you guessed that one. But a equals 2 is going to give us another solution. Set it equal to 2. Raise both sides to the fourth power. You get x plus 10 is equal to 16, and x equals 6. So those are the two real solutions because the others, this a squared minus 3a, ugh, I can't write 3a, I write 36, minus 3a plus 16 equals 0 gives you complex solutions. Definitely you can go uh, use them, but we're looking for real solutions for whatever reason. Anyway, so we got the x values, we're good. Let me go ahead and show you the second approach real quick. The second approach uh, kind of uses um, a different idea. What do I know? I have a to the fourth plus b to the fourth is equal to 17, and I have a plus b is equal to 3. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, square a plus b. That's going to give me a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. Now, let's go ahead and square a squared plus b squared. That's going to give me a to the fourth plus b to the fourth plus 2a squared b squared. I'm going to use substitution here, no surprises, right? a, b, I'm going to call that p. And then from here I get two equations. a plus b is 3, so 9 equals a squared plus b squared plus 2p. 2p or not 2p, that didn't work. Uh, and a squared plus b squared squared, I don't know what it is, uh, but I'm just going to write it as, um, you know, well, actually, I do know. From here, I can isolate a squared plus b squared. I can write it as 9 minus, oops, my 9 looks like a q. 9 minus 2p. And then I'm going to square this, right, and replace it with 9 minus 2p squared. That's equal to a to the fourth plus b to the fourth, which is 17 plus 2p squared. Okay, so this kind of gives me a nice quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and expand it and solve and we're going to get the value of p. So that's going to be uh, 81 uh, minus 
1836, right? Uh, P plus 4P squared equals 17 plus 2P squared. And from here, you're going to get the P values, but let's go ahead and evaluate it real quick. 2P squared minus 36P. 81 minus 17 is again 64. We got that number again, but dividing by 2 gives us uh, P squared minus 18P plus 32 is equal to 0. And this is factorable into P minus 2 and P minus 16. Right? Easy. From here, P equals 2. But P is XY. If P is equal to 2, remember, uh, P and Q are related. Uh, we know that... Uh, what do we know? Okay. We know that P... Okay, what am I... <laughs> What am I talking about? Okay, so P is equal to AB, all right? So AB is equal to 2. I also know that A plus B is equal to 3. This gives us 2 comma 1 and 1 comma 2, right? 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1. And the other pair is going to give me uh, AB is equal to 16, which is P, and A plus B is equal to 3, but this is going to give us complex solutions. And how do I use the value of 1 and 2? A equals 1. We set it equal to the fourth root of x plus 10. From here we get x equals negative 9. If a is equal to 2, then we get x equals 6 as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.